morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lori Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering natural health on this year, Wednesday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, we're looking at the topic, what efforts will it take to get you into balance? What effort, um, efforts will it take to get you into balance? So this is what we're looking at here this morning as we do our live talk program. So welcome again. Hopefully you had a blessed night rest and you're ready to take on the challenges and um, take some opportunities that come your way this day. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I thank you again for the blessings of your word, for the blessing of the Spirit, dear Lord, that inspires um, to think on thoughts and meditate upon things, dear Lord, for the well-being not only of myself but of others. May you bless us, dear Lord, as we contemplate these things for Christ's sake. Amen. So again, my topic is what efforts will it take to get you into balance? So what efforts will it take to get you into balance? So um, it's easy for us to get out of balance. And as you know, the process of balance, which is not my focus per se, um, in the body is what we call homeostasis. So the body is in balance. When everything is right, there's sufficient amount of nutrients, um, the proper amount of heat, the proper amount of water, rest, you know, all that stuff, and I'll briefly touch on some of those things, uh, the body tends to be in balance and it feels good, it feels healthy, it feels like it's in charge. Um, normally you get a virus or you're tired or something, the body starts to feel out of whack. Probably your, 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 your sides towards your back is hurting you because your kidney is tired um, and you need rest so that you can make the organ refresh itself. And you know something is, is off, and so you have to do something to bring it into balance. So we're going to talk about that today. And so the question I ask again, and the statement I pose, uh, whichever way you want to look at it, is what efforts, um, what type of efforts or what efforts will it take to get into balance, you know, into balance health? So that's what it is. I'll, I'll repeat it properly. What efforts will it take to get into balance health? Uh, that's basically a big question. And the answer uh, for most of the time, for most of the time when you're really out of balance, not just, as I say, you feel a little bit tired and you need some sleep, that's normal. But we're talking about you get sick. Um, it will take crazy effort. And that's the answer to the question. So I tell you up front, so you have your marching orders for the day. If you're sick, you need to put forward crazy effort to bring the body back to normalcy and this is normally the problem when a person has a disease because a person will say they have such and such a disease and you see them chilling and you'll be like wow you see that they have a lot of faith and they can move the disease like a mountain or they're playing a game because they're not serious enough according to the problem they have and this is true for our theme for this week, which is avoid extremes, maintain balance. Avoid extreme, maintain balance. But what's um, interesting about this today is that in order often for you to maintain balance, when things are out of balance, now this is not now things are in balance, things have become unbalanced. You got to go to crazy extremes in a kind of a way that would push you in the opposite direction to get yourself into balance. So our main premise for the week is life is better lived in the middle. So when disruptions come or demands come, you can handle it. So the question now is what if the disruption came and the demand came and you're pushed off your game, so to speak, you're pushed out of the middle. You're not in the middle. You're not in the center of things. You're off the left, off to the right. Now we're not talking about ideology as I spoke about yesterday. And tomorrow I'll talk about a different type of ideology for life. But we're talking about now what happens if you're pushed out of balance health-wise and you're really now into some dark places, you're really deep in into water and you're drowning. Well, as you know, you're going to have to put forward some effort. Now, you know, if you're drowning, you can't start trashing about your lose your energy uh, the efforts there is just to keep afloat and keep calm so that's basically would be the issue with um 
when you're out of balance that often people do not make the effort that they need to or they don't know what effort they need to make because sometimes people are making effort but they're making effort in all the wrong places we don't want to do that so i really believe sometimes you have to do crazy effort to bring yourself back in balance and sometimes it takes a while it takes a good while to get yourself back into balance. So without going into any specifics, I want to start off by reading some text to you. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3, Jeremiah 4, verse 3, it says here, For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. So break up your fallow ground. So ground's laying there, nothing is happening to it. Uh, you're going to have to break it up. So how you have to break it up? You have to strike into it. You have to pull hard. You have to push hard. You have to do everything you can. Um, because it's sitting there. And oftentimes, this is the type of effort it's going to take to get things going. And sometimes it's going to take a while. One thing I've known in life is a person come up with an idea. But often it's not. The idea is not good. It's the level of effort that it's going to take for them to bring that idea to fruition. And so the idea sometimes is a great idea, but when you listen to them, like you say, how are you going to execute that? How are you going to make that happen? And when you hear the answer, you realize, oh, it's not going to happen. And if they ask you, we think you'd be like, that is great, but it's not going to happen. Because what you need to do to get that to go and make that happen is some crazy effort. And the efforts are going to be some real hard pushing. And no matter how brilliant that is, you still have to execute it. And that's just the problem here. So when we're out of balance health-wise, we're going to start now by breaking up our follow ground. So when you think about follow ground, you think about something that you could throw the seed down. You could even get the seed probably a little bit below the surface of the ground. And the seed could try to sprout and do stuff, but the ground is so hard that it's not ready for seed to grow. The ground has to be... Um, plowed up you have to do some work with the ground you have to break up the clods the hard parts the tough parts that are almost come like um, they seem like they're um, stone almost but they're not you're gonna have to do some work with the field and prep it up to get it going and so if you're in a situation where your refrigerator your cupboards your mindset your um, food pantry or whatever is not ready for health and you need to put in crazy effort your crazy effort is going to have to be some real crazy effort if you're into a sick situation and you say i'm, I'm gonna do something natural but you are on a burger and you know hot dog diet your effort is going to be crazy effort because where you need to get to and how you need to get there is going to be a lot of work and often this is where people don't understand you say to a person um, you need to take some herbs and they're saying like what two capsules a day two capsules a day you'd be like man you don't even you're dead you don't even understand what's going on man you have to be taking stuff by the tablespoon um what are you talking about two capsules a day you don't understand the level of sickness that you're in and you know i've known people that be like yeah look at this new thing i'm taking i'm like man you need to take the whole bottle today and move on to the next bottle tomorrow. What are you talking about? Um, when you're in a situation and a fight for your life, in order for you to get your body back to normal, which is what I would think is balance, you're going to have to push the body so far to one way. You know, it's just like what I was talking about yesterday. If you're far left and you think that's normal, um, you're going to have some, some things to deal with mentally because you're going to have to get the, the person... Um, Push the person so far right to just get them back into center. And probably you have to push them, um, which is what I understand the Lord does. I really believe to a certain degree this is what the Lord does. Is push you far right and then let you go. And then your spring, your spring action, because you were so far left, bring you back center. It's like you go boing and it's just boom and you're back into center. And that's, that's literally life. This is why I see sometimes people will be far, you know, people always say, why somebody would just go far right and then go far left? Because they're so extreme that it's ridiculous. 
that in order to try to even bring them back to normal, so you have to push them far left, and then they sent they're, they're like this elastic band and they pull back center, and that's just the reality. What it takes to move a person out of a place. If I'm talking to a person in a week ago or a month ago, they were talking about, man, need to eat some beef and all that stuff. And then a month later, you see them and say, oh, man, I just got diagnosed with cancer. You'll be like, wow, now what are we going to do here? Because you have to push them so far fanatical, I'm talking about, health-wise, just to get them to a point where they even they start the process to take care of their body. You have to go extreme with them. So if you're talking to them and they're thinking, oh, well, you know, I do a little thing. They'll be like, nah, you don't understand what you're dealing with. You're going to die. You just don't understand. Are you going to get disabled? Or are you going to be in a wheelchair? And all type of stuff. Unnecessarily. Because you're so beyond the hate ball. You know, you think about a person. If they reach 35, they're 35 years old. And they're deficient. That deficiency has been there for years. Could be for 35 years. And now the deficiency is translating into a disease. Into some type of debility. And so now how do you build back up that body? You're going to have to try to get them back to zero. You know, level. If I'm looking at them, my decibels here. So zero is um, neutral. But they, then you're going to have to even push them past zero and then bring them back down to zero. So it's how do you get them back to normal and then even push them beyond normal and then readjust down again. Just to get the system to start functioning the way it's supposed to function. I have believed over the years that what some people call normal even, this is another thing that I kept on thinking about. Um, when I was thinking about this topic first, I kept on thinking about it and say, you know, what some people call normal is not normal behavior. Or I should say health-wise. See, a person could be so depressed and pushed down in their functioning that what they think is, say, normal energy, their energy level, is not normal. It's below average. It's because they're deficient. So this is what they always experience life in. That's all they know because you only know your body. And so their levels are so low that they say that's normal. So if I say, hey, look, we need to get you back into homeostasis or we need to get you back into normalcy, they'll be like, okay. And they take a little bit of thing and they're like, yeah, I feel good. And for them, that's normal. And But for you, that would probably feel sick because that's not normal. They don't know what normal is. Or what a great normal is. Imagine if a guy come and say, I have low testosterone. I have low whatever. And what is normal for him would be a depression for somebody else. So to take him back into normal, you got to put, you got to give him a total re a total different view of what normal is. And sometimes you have to give him a view of what extreme is just for them to get an idea of what normal is. So it would be the same thing when we talk about like if I you're describing to a person how to eat healthy. And you know, you say the a lot of people healthy is a brown diet. That means, you know, brown rice, whole wheat, you know, everything brown. But a real healthy diet is a colorful diet. You know, most of the food is purple, orange, yellow green you know the, the rainbow so you we're talking about like you know cauliflower um that's white then you have um cabbage white purple you have um eggplant carrots you know um orange you know all that type of stuff so that's that's a healthy diet the more color on your plate the more color in your bowl of cereal the more co color in your fruit fruit bowl you know you know, your bananas, all that, that's a healthy diet. But often, uh, a brown diet, which is, you know, your whole grains and stuff like that, is what you're trying to get a person to before you can get them to color. So sometimes you have to oversell the color diet, you know, the colorful diet, just so to move them public that they can start eating a brown diet. 
so they can get off the meats and the white rice, white flour, you know, white everything. So they can start eating. But really where they're going to be at their best is with a colorful diet. So you, you have to oversell just to probably sell the brown diet. You know, you oversell the colorful diet and they're like, man, um, I need more color. But you know, I've been, I'll, okay, 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 I'll do, I'll do the brown stuff. Because the brown stuff is going to be revolutionary. Um, and they're not even ready for the colorful stuff. It's, it's, for me, is if a person can get to a point where they are vegetarian. That's a good thing. But if I can even sell them vegan and color diet and they could just drop pork and beef and just probably do fish and chicken, that's a good thing. You know, it's just sometimes for me, I'm just like, how do I move a person just a little bit? Because the person is so far away from what is healthy that you can't talk to them about, um, you know, you have to talk to them about seaweed and, you know, just take them straight out, as I said, straight out gangster, you know, just way out mobster type of thing, you know, gone far out to bring them in a little movement, you know, where they're like, okay, okay, so you're saying... It would because be, I've known people. I've tell them, please, if you just could just get off beef and pork, just cut that stuff out. That would be such a blessing. You, you your body will feel so much better. You you get rid of your gout and or limit your gout and all that type of stuff. And the person do it and the gout get reduced. And I'm like, man, you see, I just, you just need to move the person, but they need to have an idea. What am I? What am I eating? I'm over here with the colorful stuff. So you need to come up, make a step, right? So here is sometimes just to, it's to start the process. And just, so just so you know, Jeremiah 4 verse 3, what I just read, break up your fallen ground and sow not among thorns. So it's just to get the person to start the process. They ain't, we ain't talking about reaping yet. We're just talking about starting the, the you know, just think about the body. When a person is having osteoporosis and things like that, the whole body starts becoming calcified, hardened with lipids in the blood vessels, the body, no blood not flowing properly, the, the nerves is just beaten and shot. The whole system is like a ground that has never been sown, never been formed, and you now have to start breaking all that crust up. The brain has a cr layer of crust on it. How are you gonna do that? You gotta start somewhere. So you gotta, you gotta. There's gotta be a day when that plow hit that ground. And so how you start? And I think number one, you start with pork, you know, and and then you start pushing, pushing, to push the body into a place where you can start getting a harvest. So that's what it is. Now, if you look at Hosea chapter twelve, ten, verse twelve and thirteen, Hosea chapter twelve. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 12 and 13, uh, says, Sow to yourself in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies because you distrust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. So here's again one of these famous passages of scripture where the Lord is calling people to um, have a change. And the change is from the brink of disaster, he's calling back. You know, this whole idea here, the prophets are sent to call to maintain the people or call the people back from the brink of disaster. And so when we're talking about an extreme, the person is already at an extreme in their health. They're facing a diagnosis that is life-threatening or debilitating. And so, as the Bible says, you break up the fall of ground, first in Jeremiah here, and you sow not among thorns, because it's not going to work, you know. So it's not just, you know, somebody say, well, just, just let me put in something healthy. You know, that's not going to work. Because the process starts where you can break up the fall of ground and you're going to start putting some seeds. But the seeds you're putting in, and you know, I kind of missed that point in Jeremiah. The seeds you're putting in 
can't be put it among thorns because you're wasting your time. You know, I'm sure you hear people say they don't want to waste their exercise. So their diet is very strict. And that, to me, is the same concept in biblical terms, in righteous terms, in salvational terms, and in health th in terms. You're trying to get results. And how are you going to get the results? You, you're going to have to start breaking up some stuff. Then you're going to have to say, I'm not going to throw any seed amongst thorns. Uh, the seed needs to go into the ground that I just broke up and I just plow. And I can't waste my exercise. I can't waste my diet. You can't put it in good organic food. You can't put in, um, you know, proper sleep and all this type of stuff that you need to do to be healthy. And then you're wasting it. And this is where I would say you need crazy effort because often people don't want to put the effort in, but they just want to take a supplement. They want to do a little exercise. They want to do a little thing. And what they're doing is they're wasting it because they're sowing amongst thorns. And all it's going to come up is, mm -hmm. see, it's one thing like the Bible says, what Christ says in, 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 in 2,000 years ago, he says, look, um, there, there are enemies that will come in and sow um, tears among the wheat. But it's a different story if you go out there and you go sow your seed amongst thorns. The thorns are already there. You know it's not going to flourish. You see a, cl a cluster, or I don't know if you call it a cluster, of thorns and bush and stuff like that. And you go right below it, you dig up a hole, dig a hole, and plant your seed there. And then when you can't reap it, you can't even find where it's at, you lose the seed, you know, if it flourished, then you say, oh, I didn't get no results. You never want to do that. And I know people do this all the time. They they just want to do, you know, like that even people, the people do this especially, I think, with, more with even medicine. But they do it with supplements also. They'll, they'll be taking a medicine, but they won't change their diet. So the, the doctor said, look, I'm going to put you a diabetic medication. And they're still eating M&M's. They're still eating Cadbury chocolate. And you'll be like, wait a minute. I thought I thought you 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 had a diagnosis for diabetes. How, how are you still eating fried chicken? All that burger you eating, all that grease. Well, you know it's gonna clog up your cells. You're not gonna be able to get the blood sugar, the sugar, and your doctor's gonna have to increase your insulin. And so the the drug often, to a certain degree, you know what my opinion there is on that. But I think to a large degree, the drug is not the problem. Because the person has not recognized what they need to, the effort they need to put in. Because it's, it's, it's a cheat. They just want to go and say, doctor, hit me. And I don't, I don't want to do nothing. But the effort it's going to take to get the body back into balance is going to be such a heavy effort that the average person would see you making the effort and think you're crazy. And only for you to realize they're crazy because they're foolish sitting there not understanding the efforts they need to take to maintain that balance, to get your body back into homeostasis, into neutrality. So you cannot sow among thorns. And that would go the same thing for church. It's one thing to say, um, uh, to get it in a biblical term, so you get it broader. It's one thing to say, yeah, the, 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 the enemy comes in and sows tears. In other words, somebody trying to trip me up. Whoever it is. But it's another thing for you to just go out there and so among thorns. And then say, oh, you know, the wheat and tear must grow together. And if you get that one. That's not the same thing. You can't purposely go do the wrong thing and then say the wheat and tear must grow together. So it's the same thing with health. You got to know that your effort will be wasted if you do things to waste your effort. You can't say, um, I prayed over it when you're not doing the right thing. So that's why the effort has to be serious because a person will be like, yeah, I take a little supplement or I take some medicine from my doctor. And I'm like, yeah, so what, you, but what you're doing? What are you doing? Um, I'm taking the things that my doctor tell me to take. No, you got to make some effort. And the effort you have to make is crazy effort. So what effort will it take for you to get into balance? Crazy effort, serious effort. If you're not making those effort, you're not trying. Someone said, yeah, I'm trying. A little shimmy here and a little shimmy there. You're not trying. Come on.
So sow to yourself in righteousness. So do the right thing. And you'll reap mercy. That means the Lord will say, hey, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you because I see your effort. I see you're doing what you're praying for. Or you're moving according to your prayer. Remember, prayer is the, is the opening of the heart to the Lord. So when we pray, we are praying and our hearts get open. And wherever our, our treasure is, that's where our heart is. And wherever our heart is, that's where our treasure is at. So we're going to reap some mercy because God is going to say, I'm going to bless you. Break up your follow ground. For the time, sh uh, for it is the time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. So you need to move. You need to move in the right direction. Think about it. You don't bless people who not move in the right direction or making a move. You know, I see someone making a move. You're like, it encourages you. Um, charity is something that is encouraged. You see the person trying and they're fighting like, man, man I'll pull you out. If somebody's drowning and they're chilling, I'd be like, and they're like calmly, I'm going down the third time. And you'd be like, oh, they're playing a game. <laughs> Next, you know, this person doesn't come back up. I, I said, are you be like, that's strange. You mean somebody drowning and that's how they go down? Oh, this is my second gulp. That's not a drowning person. Person have to make some crazy effort. And in that crazy effort, you realize, oh, oh, something is wrong. And the lifeguard is supposed to jump in and pull them up. But if the person is doing like, ah, there's no problem, then there's no problem. There's no need for a lifeguard to jump in. There's no need for the Lord to intervene. If you have to repent about something, you should act as if you're repentant. There's a lot of people who are repenting and they don't act like they ain't nothing wrong. They seem upset with God. Now verse 13 says, Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruits of lies. Because thou distrusted in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. So this is where the rub comes in. Wherever we get to, when we are in ill health, we got to know that it was a process that got us there. And it was heavy heifer, effort and it was heavy lifting to get us there. We made a lot of effort to damage ourselves. We put in our work. We loved certain things. We cherished certain behaviors. And now we hear, in order for you to get now, into balance, you got to plow. Because when we did wickedness, we plow, we lurked. We made effort. You know, when I read this, I think about a young man who is willing to go to that young girl's house, slip through the window at night, and made an effort. Now if the young girl say, hey, marry me, or a young girl say, oh, there's a baby coming, you need to make the same type of effort to take care of that child. Or to get married. You need to man, put in. Show that man. This kid here is willing to put the effort in. If you're willing to climb up two stories to get through that room. You must be willing to climb two stories. To pay for the child support or whatever. You plow. But often what it is. Is that people make every effort to destroy their body. And when it's time now to move in the opposite direction. To take care of the body. They'll be like oh that's too extreme. I'm like. Right, you don't think all that GMO food is extreme? You don't think all that deep fried food is extreme? Somebody cooking food in fried in, in oil? That's extreme. It might not seem extreme when you're eating it, but when you look back, you're like, yeah. You look at that pig and you look how filthy that pig is. And somebody sitting there eating that pig. That's extreme. And that's how you have to look at life. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. It's a cause and effect. Even if somebody say, I didn't know. But the reality is that's the reality. You're eating all that manufactured industrial food that it's, man, it's genius. You know, I've read about some of these foods, how they make them. And you have to applaud the people who make it. This is some genius level stuff, the level of ingenuity that went in to make the food that you really think about and you're thinking, man, that's some crazy stuff. I'm eating that. That thing there has been run through so many machines. <laughs> it's not it's not the same thing as getting a raw material in your kitchen and blend a little bit and knead a little bit and throw it in the oven and pop it comes out. We're talking about running down production line 
and then running from one production facility to the next. And when you, you just like making a car, and when you finally get the finished product, you're like, this is genius. Uh, I'm not sure if I should eat this. So, you know, we reap the result of our choices. Whether or not we were ignorant of it, but this is how our parents' choices. This is how they fed us. I've said this before, but I remember one time somebody said, uh, 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 this person we, I know said, um, hey, Lord, pray for um, this wife and husband. Both of them came down with the same cancer. And then the person says, I guess it ran in the family. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, what? The wife and husband, cancer ran in the family. I guess she's saying their wife and husband are so their family. <laughs> so I was like, wow, they end up with the same <laughs> genetical weakness. But it was the diet. It proves, actually, it's a powerful evidence that the diet is so powerful that it took up both wife and husband with the same disease at the same time. That's a true marriage right there. Marriage to hell. So if you look at this, this is the reality. You got to make so much effort. You know, you know. There, I was remember listening to an interview with somebody who is a, 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 a musician, and they said they could be in like New York and they feel for some like peach cobbler. And they'll just get on a plane, just go to straight to the airport, get on a plane and fly straight to Atlanta and just go get themselves peach cobbler. And I was like, that's impressive. That's what money does. <laughs> you could just have a desire. Can you imagine I just feel for a certain type of meal and I just say, hey, I'm going to fly straight to California or I'm going to fly to Florida. And I get a meal and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to fly back burning that money so you make a lot of effort you can see that same person now it's time to take your body your body die you have a disease and the person like man i just, just give me two capsules two capsules will fix the problem right and i'm like no you need to make the same effort you need to hear that there's you know there's a certain time of the year and somebody has some organic peach grown in some of the most rich soil Soil has just been tested and proven to have some of the most um, heavy amount of selenium and stuff like that. And you're going to fly down to <laughs> do the same thing. You're going to get on a plane immediately, as I, I told you. Fly to Atlanta. Um, find a farm outside of Atlanta. And go buy those peach and eat those peach. And bring them back some. <laughs> and that's the type of effort one needs to make. This is similar to the type of effort we make to sin. Make the same effort. And this is what, you know, John the Baptist says. He says, look, you know, I need to see the, the fruit of your action to show me that you repent. But people want to just say, oh, let's pray for me. Anoint me. Remember, I remember somebody more recently here that was dying of cancer. And what was their effort? They told me they went to three different churches and three different pastors anoint them. They died a few months later after they told me that. I was like, wow, they're making effort, but all they want to make effort is some oil on their forehead. I'm like, you need to bathe in that oil. So because thou didst trust in the, in the way, in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. So you trust in something. You, you put your trust in something and you really believe it. So in order for somebody to come off of the sad diet, the standard American diet, and there could be other diet. It could be the cat diet. The, no, it's always S. <laughs> the standard American diet. The standard um, whatever um, in the middle. You could have believe in that. And you trust that you believe this is the way to go. And now you need to change. You're not, you're not going to give that thing up. Because that thing is what brought you to this place. You got to give it up. But in order for somebody to give it up, they need a fright. They need something to make them fly. To make them, you know, a, a flight or a fright. And you got to move and move hard. And that's the difficulty that has happened. Because most of the time when people talk about it, if you do a little health, you know, I've, I've seen people shocked when somebody say, I've gone raw. I'm doing a juice fast. And so I say, what do you mean a juice fast? 100% juice and teas and that type of thing and supplements and just flushing my system with pounds and pounds every day of fruits and vegetables I'm washing my sins away 
somebody said that's extreme and that same person will go under the knife would take chemotherapy would take radiation burn themselves the hair fall out the toenails fall out and they look at you and say you're doing a hundred percent raw you're crazy that's extreme and i'm looking at them and thinking you have no hair are you looking at me and telling me that i'm extreme <laughs> it's it's ridiculous so but they trust in their mighty men who are the mighty men their evolutionary professors their biologists and their chemists and their psychologists their shrink their person that is giving them the drug for their mental health so these are the mighty men these are the mighty men in our society you think about the average person they're two days away or a month away or a week away from shooting themselves in the head but they trust in their mighty men and the type of effort you're telling them to make for them to avoid that and live a blessed life they're like nope my mighty men tell me that this is what i need to do i need to get the shot in my butt buttocks <laughs> and that's just the problem they trust in something but the effort nope in proverbs 3 verse 7 and 8 proverbs 3 verse 7 and 8 it says be not wise in thine own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones that's what we need depart from evil evil so that's where the problem is because you see when you trust in your mighty men and the mighty man come and say this is a pill for your ill you'd be like you mean i don't have to exercise no don't worry about that and say i come along now and say no 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 you need to sweat you need to push hard they'd be like nah my mighty men I remember I was dealing with somebody that was having a debilitated autoimmune disease. And I tell them, look, number one, the drugs you're on, one of the side effects is death. It is a lethal drug. It will kill you. One of the side effects that it will paralyze you. I say, but this is what you can do over here. And the person says, the doctor I'm dealing with is one of the best in the region. It's one of the top doctors. And you're telling me that I should do something natural. The person ended up paralyzed anyhow. I'm like, oh yeah, you're trusting your mighty man. Um, it Even if a person said they're going to trust in their mighty man, I'm going to say, go ahead, trust in your mighty man. I can't fight that because it's hard to argue against a person with two PhDs. Honestly, you know, why why have a way? I try not to waste my time. I say this here, but I, when I'm talking to people, I, I try to avoid touching their mighty men. Because they're really mighty. I mean, these people are geniuses. Um, But one thing I can know uh, that is genius is this. Look at this. Be not wise in thine own eyes, which is Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8. Fear the Lord, depart from evil that's genius that's not just genius that's inspiration and that's totally sensible more sensible than any of these double phd and triple phd and quadruple phd anybody out there so even if you don't listen to somebody they don't say take this pill it could cripple you and it could poison you and kill you it does not hurt in the meantime to start juicing to start doing more fruits and vegetables, go to a collar diet, start exercising, start doing the things you do. It does not hurt. And I know somebody say, oh yeah, but I have um, some problems with my blood pressure, I think it is, and I'm taking a drug and this drug make me can't eat too much fruits and vegetables. And I say, your mind to mind gonna kill you. But you gotta know, you gotta get crazy in order to move yourself into balance and just saying you've done wrong all your life to yourself and the solution for it is just to take this little capsule even if i come to you and i say hey this herb formula will help you here take this capsule i mean what what is that gonna do if you don't start doing the right thing so notice verse 8 says it shall be health to thy navel and marred to that bone. See, when we're out of whack, we're deficient primarily. That's our primary problem. We have a deficiency. Or we have a weakness, a body part that's been overburdened or underfed. 
It's either one or the other. It's something along that line will cause a sickness. And so you have to feed the body. So no matter what pill you're taking, you got to put nutrients in. And those nutrients are going to come from um, organic, you know, tree ripened, mature, clean foods, primarily fruits and vegetables. That's what you have to do. And if you're not doing that and you're just taking a pill, you still does not fix the problem of your bone marrow. Because this is where your blood production takes place. You got to feed that factory. And if you're not feeding that factory and you're not putting nutrients in your body so that your blood has life in it. If you're not dealing with your mental status, if you're not listening to me on Monday and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and two, you know, and, and whatever, five days a week. And making sure that your, your, your health is your emotional state, your mental state, your bone marrow state. You will not overcome the disease. If you overcome the disease, you're st I've known people that say, oh, I've overcome, overcome cancer. And I'm looking at them and thinking, you're two steps away from a nursing home. What are you talking about? And then you see them a, a little bit later on. Oh, the cancer is back. Like, come on. Why are you fooling? Why are you and your mighty man fooling yourself? You look deficient. If you look deficient, that tells you that you need to fix that problem. That's your number one problem right there. If you look deficient, if you look in the mirror and you look like you're falling apart, your skin just look like it has no glow and the blood is not feeding your skin. You need help for your marrow. You need help for your navel. Your navel is where your, your, your digestive tract is, your colon, your colon is. You need something down there. Your emotional state is, is, is a wreck. You need to you fix your emotions. There's so many people I know. They'll never maintain help because they have anxiety attack. You need to fix that. You get some people around you and some prayer going on for you and some anointing. Something is wrong. You address those problems and you have to become extreme with it. You can't just sit there like, oh, I'm going to double. Many people, they don't do health. They double into health. Got to fight and got to fight hard. And something you got to fight for years. But it's worth the fight because, again, it, it, is, it is more so not just about being healthy because we're not going to live forever. It's more so about fighting. You fight, you fight hard. If you fight hard to get into a problem, you fight out of the problem until you die. You die fighting. Now, notice here, you always start with nutrition because most of our problems come from what we eat. It's the food that we eat that is destroying our bodies. So you deal with your nutrition. You deal with nutrition. And so somebody will be like, yeah, but how extreme? If you can afford it and you can only eat food that is naturally grown or certified organic, that's all you eat. If that's if you can, if you can get your hands on it. So you can't get your hands on it. We live in a world where it's especially nowadays, it's always in flux. There's always a new disaster. There's always a new disruption to the system because the disasters has, has increased. We're getting closer to the end of time. But if you can get your hands on things that are certified, you, you know, somebody said they don't believe in that. You, you, you're joking. If they're certified, some people are going to lie. Some people are going to tell the truth. I don't worry about it. But if I can get my hand on things that are naturally grown, I'd eat that. If I go somewhere and it's not certified organic, but the person says, hey, I don't put pesticide on it, I'm good. I'm not going to go and say, hey, let me go check your barn. That's between them and their honesty. But I'm going to do due diligence. And I'm going to hope, let's say, a certifying agent, whether it be the federal government or some other independent certifying body. It's certifying everything is grown naturally. And we're good. But you start there and you start feeding your body. You can't feed it in a normal way. You got to feed it aggressively, just as aggressive as as we were to eat, you know. I remember I used to eat these um, milkshake from either McDonald's or Burger King. I can't remember which one. One of them sell a milkshake. It was like chalk. It was like somebody took the chalk from the teacher. Like they, one of those companies went to the, the teacher's um, place, Depot. I don't know where they buy the supply and buy chalk. And then they grind it up and sell it to me with, with some red... Um, uh, what is it? I think it's a, they use the red bug from from Mexico and some flavoring and said this is milkshake. And I used to scarf it down. And I used to drink it and thinking. I used to drink it and thinking this was something wrong with this. 
It tastes like chalk. Uh, but I kept on drinking in ignorance and in desire because it felt so cool. <laughs> you know, because eating that type of food is cool. <laughs> it's, re it's kind of a sick reward. So you do that. Now you need to do the same um, now natural. And so what you do, you get some almonds and some cashews and some dates and a little water. You blend that. You get yourself some organic strawberries. Not regular. Don't eat regular strawberries. Don't do it. So you get some regular, some organic strawberries. And you blend that with some banana and some almond, coconut milk, whatever you find your hands on. Throw some ice in there. Sweeten it with some brown sugar, honey, whatever you want. Or just use the dates only. And you blend it, you drink it, you're thinking, wow. This is like I'm drinking ice cream. This is what I thought I was buying when I went to one of those fast food chain. And you drink that and you tell me if you there's no comparison. I, I, I don't care who you are. You you I don't I even the devil as lies he is. You just, you still say the, the chalk the chalk stuff they better because he's a devil. But if you're an honest person or you even a dishonest person, you can't tell me that what I just described here to you. It's not better. It's a hundred times better. I've made it. I've blown myself away. I'm thinking, man, this is like I'm drinking um, ice cream. All natural. Nice vanilla. As a matter of fact, yesterday I made something that was like really impressive in taste. And it was the same base again. Some cashew. And, and this I didn't plan to talk about this, but I'm just talking about how you feed your body. Uh, the cashew and the almonds are going to feed your brain. People use a lot of almonds have been proven to reverse um, sclerotic plaques, plaques, sclerotic plaques on their veins. And so you take, I'm not making from me and my wife, so Andrew, I say you try to do just about a handful of nut a day, no, not more. So I took two handfuls, handful of cashew, handful of almonds. Then I take about five uh, dates, sometimes six. Cut them up because sometimes there's bugs inside the middle of the dry dates. <laughs> so I cut them up, cut them open first to see that they're clear. I put it in the blender with some water, I blend. Get me two or three cubes of ice. Get me two organic bananas. I get me um, some some uh, fresh mangoes. Mangoes are out now. They're in season. Get me some fresh mangoes. I peel, I think, two, one or two mangoes. Um, and then I eat this, you know, this stuff off the seed because it's hard to get it off the seed. I just get the flesh on the outside. Mangoes from Mexico, mangoes from Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic mangoes just came. Um, then um, they just arrive. The first set arrive, and they're not too sweet, but the flavor is, is good. Then I get myself some um, frozen Goya soursop. I can't remember the name of the Spanish name of it, but soursop. S O U R S O P, right? They say it's good for cancer. So, but the flavor is sweet. It's, it's nice, not sweet, but sweet. Colloquially speaking, the flavor is excellent. Now, I did that, right? And then I add some honey just to make it even a little bit sweeter. And then I throw some coconut milk. Uh, the, not the coconut cream, but the milk itself. The regular milk, like almond milk, coconut milk. And then I blend that again. Oh man, the flavor was good. The flavor, the fla If you drink that, there's no way you can tell me anything you've ever drink out there tastes as good as that. And I've done, before, you know, I've done it. Something I do it with passion fruit, the the passion fruit from Goya, or the passion syrup, or I do guava. Recently, I did guava. It wasn't the guava is not a strong flavor. It kind of got overpowered with the mango and, and the sour sop. And, um, and that's, that's, and I drank that. Oh man, that was nice. Now you tell me you do that. And somebody say, oh, that's fanatical. That's too extreme. You're crazy. That's, forget about the health, all the health that I just say. And I could talk about with everything I just said. The flavor and the, the texture blows you away. It blow anything out there that is all milk based and all the type of pus and blood. It, it is just so much better. And and so that's the type of effort it's going to take 
to bring you back into balance. But it's not bad effort. It's not bad effort. As a matter of fact, I'll say this real quickly before I go to some of the rest of because I didn't plan to say any of this. But I'm going to give you an example. If you ever saute down, like steam down to a little bit without water, um, a mix of kale, spinach, tomato. It's one of my favorite. Sp kale, spinach, tomato. With a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of salt, get some sea salt, and some sunflower oil. Normally, sunflower oil is mild, so I like using that. And you saute it down. Use the tomato to saute down the, the cook down the, so to speak, in a, like a saucepan, um, until it's dry. Not burnt, but dry. <laughs> and you, and you, as I say, it's not over salted, under salted, not just a little onion powder. If you're, you're, you're adventurous, you can put a little bit of like Bragg's liquid amino, soy sauce on it. Now, what that does, that combination, it's a, it's, it's, it is the, what they call the fifth flavor. You know, you have sweet, sour, salt, whatever. And then you have what they call the soy sauce flavor, or in Chinese, I think it's called yunami. Hunami. The spinach is yunami. Soy sauce is yunami. Tomato is yunami. And then you have the regular flavor with salt and a little bit of sweetness from the tomato and a little bit of sweetness from the soy sauce. And then you have the savor from the onion you have all the flavor on your tongue even even a little bit of sour if you you know because of the tomato again so your tongue is going to experience every single flavor profile in what i just described and you eat that and you tell me that anything else is good i'm not saying that says meat won't do something like that but you try that then you'll be surprised or i'm always surprised because all the flavor profile are there sweet sour you know what i'm saying <laughs> savory yunami hunami all of them are there so you put it on your tongue but here's a bigger thing you get your lycopene you get your your chlorophyll you get you get your various different minerals because you put the sea salt in there you get all you you, you get a big nutrient profile so somebody would say, oh, yeah, but that's extreme. But I'm telling you something, it's not extreme. It is, it, it's just when your mind is so far gone into junk food and industrial food and GMO food that to switch the diet and to do something natural, it seems extreme. Because you, you, you're at a, such an extreme to get you into balance, you're going to have to push your hard. So that's why I like to play with this type of stuff in the kitchen because what it is is that I realize when I, you're dealing with individuals that they're so extreme that they need to get hit with something they never had. Like the smoothie I just described to you or the nut shake, it would be an extreme for some people to be like, I've never had anything that tastes like this. I don't even ever had sour sop or I never had a, 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 you know, guava, passion fruit, mango, banana, you know, dates, all that stuff mixed together. So it would be a flavor profile that they never even had before, much less talking about healthy which is another concept and it's the same thing when i say you try that 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 dish i just tell you as simple as it is you try that dish with the spinach and the kale and stuff it's a massive flavor oh it's bitter also that's the one i was missing i know i was missing a fifth one because the kale and the spinach especially the scale will add a little bitterness to it so you might get hit with all five flavor profile when you eat junk food you primarily get hit with some savory, salty, and um, some hunami. You don't get all it because they try to remove all bitterness. Bitter has a good flavor profile if it's limited, you know, but it's part of the flavor profile that God gave your tongue. And when you put all those things together, oh, natural food is great if you know to cook with it. And so you take care of your nutrition. It will be health to your navel, navel and it will be health to your bone. Your, your, your marrow of to die bones. That's what you need. You need exercise. Again, without the exercise, your body is just not going to do what it's supposed to do. We're built to last. We're built to always use our muscle. That's why our muscle is there. You have to drink your water every day. Clean, good, soft water. Important. Sunlight important. The right temperature. When it's too hot, we need to be cool. When it's too cold, we need to be hot. You could try to maintain health. If you're in a house... You can't keep the house warm. You need to sell your house and get a smaller house that you can warm up. Proper fresh air. Um, always, for me, I always have my windows cracked straight to the window, uh, straight to the winter. 
because you need to have fresh air. When you have fresh air, your lungs do good. As I said, don't be smoking um, and none of that type of stuff. Don't put no smoke in your lungs. Um, the, yesterday I saw, no, I think this morning, no, yesterday I saw an article where they were saying, um, they're still asking the question, does marijuana cause lung cancer? And doctors are calling for more. They can't make a conclusive decision, so they're calling for more um, more research. I'm going to tell you something. Anything you, you take and keep blowing smoke on it in the body, it will turn on cancer. I'm sure if you ask somebody once every day to do about five puff of of any type of smoke in your eye, I wouldn't be surprised a few years later you develop cancer in your eye. It's just, it's just to me, it's just too logical. But logic is not evidence, not proof, as they say. So they need to keep researching. You get a proper amount of rest, and you have faith in God. As the Bible says, as I read earlier, that the Lord, you will reap mercy. You do the right, the Lord will bless you. Don't follow foolish people talking about you don't want to work for stuff. If you sick, work for it. The Lord will see your effort and bless it. The Lord see you don't care. Why well, you want the Lord to care when you don't care? That's what it is. So what we're talking about here, we're talking about our mind. If your mind is out of balance and, you know, no amount of St. John's word is bringing you back into focus. No amount of mental drugs is fixing you. Probably you need to start fixing that mind intellectually um, through sermons, Bible study, conversations, meditation. You need to make that effort that way. If the mind can be brought back into balance. And as I say, change the diet and so forth. If your brain is out of whack, uh, because that could just be a process of the mechanism of the brain. Well, you know, again, the foods you eat, the water you drink, the people you talk to, the company you keep, all of that will help the mind and the brain. As I say, if your lungs is out of whack, you got to not sow among thorns. You got to put away any smokes. You got to start inhaling fresh air even you in indoors. You got to start going outside for walks. If your digestive system is out of whack, can't sow among thorns, you got to stop eating foods that have things that irritate the digestive lining. Have food, Stop eating foods that are, take long to digest like meats. You start to feed your body and take care of your digestive tract. It will work. Same thing with your skin. Same thing with your liver, your kidney if you're drinking. Um, a lot of alcohol, you got to stop um, and give the kidney a break. That's to me trying to take milk thistle. And drinking alcohol won't work because you're trying to fix it while you're trying to, you're sowing among thorns. Can't do that. Same thing with your kidney. If you have a kidney problem, you have to start taking the herbs that's going to cleanse the kidney, kidneys. And then also you have to start drinking a lot of water to flush the system. You know, you use your cranberries and stuff like that. Somebody say, hey, you want something to drink? You say, yeah, cranberry juice. You know, you, 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 you cleanse and nourish and then you stop whatever you are doing to damage yourself same thing with pancreatic problems you know cut off all the fry food cut out all of the sugary foods and you move in the right direction if your nervous system is shot especially if your nervous system is shot you start to do and practice the thing to bring back your nerve into order smoking marijuana will not fix your nerves it will get it worse same thing with your circulatory problem as i mentioned before you want to start having almonds as part of your regular handful of almonds a day you start to get yourself into the most, even buying, you know, if you go to the supermarket and you look at any certified organic oils, they're expensive, flaxseed oils and stuff like that. You use that for your salad. But if you have a circulatory problem, it's not expensive. If you don't have a circulatory problem, regular oils, you know, might do it for you. But if you have a circulatory problem, come on now, you need to be having organic oils. And so that's what the problem is often. The problem is in society, people be like, nah, it's not worth the effort. It is worth the effort. And you can't say, no, I'm good. You're not good. What you need to do is get good. You need to put the effort out to get good. So if you're out of balance, health-wise, you need to make the effort that will get you into balance health-wise. And the effort is not going to be normal effort. Whatever your problem is, you have to go crazy effort, fanatical effort. As again, balance is the aim, but sometimes we're so to the left or so to the right, we're so up the creek without a paddle that you got to paddle hard with your hands. You got to do what you have to do. You have to go out, get to the bank, 
broke, break a piece of stick and start to use it as your paddle. You got to do something and do it drastically because you can't go through life just like being dragged through life. I pray for your effort. Let's pray. Our oh, Father, watch never I pray for each and every one here that they may take these things to heart, dear Lord, that make the effort that is needed, dear Father, to bring their body back into balance, to fix whatever is broken, and not just to take a little capsule here and a capsule there, not just to say I'm going for a walk, but dear Lord, that they may make the complete effort in all aspects of their life to come into homostasis. May you bless us, dear Father. May thy grace go with us as we go through the rest of this day. For Christ's sake, amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Form Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow morning live when we should talk about current events. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King.